Why, hello friends, welcome back to another video. It's your girl Meg, and in today's video, we're gonna be talking all about hand-tied hair extensions, specifically invisible bead hair extensions. I've had these permanent hair extensions for about a month now, and I wanted to give you like my first impressions, the installation, and the maintenance, and how I feel about after having them for about a month. So we're gonna dive deep, we're gonna talk about everything that I can think of under the sun to include in this video, so make sure you stay tuned. But before you do, make sure you hit that thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future uploads, and make sure to follow along on social media, particularly my Instagram. Let's go ahead and jump into this. I am also going to be having timestamps below if you wanna skip around in this video. Make sure you see those timestamps below because that's going to direct you to specifically things that you're probably looking for. So, you ready to get this uh, hair extension review started? Let's just go ahead and do it. Like I mentioned in the intro, I have had these hair extensions for about a month now, and spoiler alert, I really love them. I've been enjoying them so much, and it was something that I really thought heavily on for a very long time before getting them. Okay, so I am no stranger to removable hair extensions. I have quite a few reviews on my Hidden Crown hair extensions. You'll find those on my YouTube channel, and I still stand by those 100%. If I were not doing permanent, it, I would 100% recommend Hidden Crown. But I've always wanted to try a permanent hair extension. I was just afraid that I was gonna like become addicted to it. <laughs> I kind of have, but it's okay because I'm in a season of my life where I really need some hair help. So let's get into like exactly why I went this route. So like I said, I've been mulling on this getting permanent hair extensions for years. It's something I've always wanted to try because I feel like as a digital creator, I want to be able to say like, oh, I've tried that before, especially when it comes to like beauty things, particularly things that might be a little bit more of an investment because this is definitely not a cheap expense by any means. So this past year, um, you know, I had a baby in 2019. I had a ton of postpartum hair loss. It was really, really bad. And then I started taking supplements going into this year to help grow up, grow out that postpartum hair loss, which worked amazing. And in the um, in the process of doing that, I started taking a supplement, which I want to warn you about if you take this, um, because it is something that caused me such severe hair damage. So I was taking um, some hair growth vitamins. I was taking Bondi Boost hair vitamins. Vitamins, absolutely love them and recommend them would 100% stand by those um, and then I thought just to be a little bit proactive sometimes I break out with biotin I started taking vitamin b5 with this which is panthen panthenetic acid I think that's how you say it there was a lot of great like um, recommendations for this supplement to help counteract the breakouts that you might experience with biotin. And I wanted to keep everything for fairly natural. I'm not taking anything like synthetic or anything. Anyway, I started taking vitamin B5 and I kid you not, I have an entire layer of hair breakage. My hair started breaking off right about here, just breaking off and my hair is about this short and I got it cut shorter to try to like mask it a little bit but like I had a huge breakage layer just straight across like about maybe even higher like right about here and it was so incredibly disheartening. Um, so that happened in about April or so and then I started I bought these clip-ins off of Amazon um, because I was like, I just want to buy something that's kind of cheap and I could wear two clip-ins just like right here. Um, and that's what I ended up doing. So I bought these little clip-ins and I clipped them into the side of my head. And because I had so much breakage that I, it, it was hard to mask, like I couldn't mask it. So I had about a piece of hair that was about this wide that was clipped in the side of my head at all times when you every time you saw me every time I left the house unless I had it like in some like sort of low bun or low ponytail I was wearing the clip-ins 
this damage was that severe and it had nothing to do with the Bondi Boost stuff. It was strictly that B5 vitamin because as soon as I stopped taking it, the hair became less dry and brittle and it stopped breaking. That was the culprit. So if you take vitamin B5 and you're noticing some hair breakage, um, I wanna definitely warn that against you. But as a result, I have some severe damage to my hair that is going to take well over a year to fix. I have fine hair, I've always had fine hair. I've never been the girl that's ever had a really thick ponytail or a thick bun. But that's why I wear my halo or my clip-ins and stuff whenever I want. But after my hair breakage was so bad, it's just like one of those things that took a huge blow to my confidence. Like I'm like, I've had fairly good hair my whole life. Like what is going on? Again, it's not been like super thick hair. I've always loved hair extensions and put them in for fun but I want to heal and re rehabilitate my hair without constantly putting clip-ins in because I was starting to get some t like rubbing here. I felt like it wasn't very good for my scalp. Um, and that's my long story that if you skipped this, let's move on to the next part, which enters permanent hair extensions. So there's, I'm not gonna go into all the details of the different types of hair, permanent hair extensions you can get, but there is a specific type of hair extension that I wanted to try and it is called invisible bead hair extensions. And this is a very new method and um, not very many people are certified in this. It may be hard to find somebody in your area that does specialize in this method, but I'm telling you, I am so happy that I went with this method because I feel like it's perfect for me. So I have been in contact with Sion at Cerrone Hair Studio in Houston. We've been chatting back and forth for a while. We follow each other. I've followed her work for almost, I want to say about nine months or so before I even set, set foot in her salon. So this is how much I mold this over. Um, because again, I wanted, I really wanted that sort of, I wanted that certain type of method. And then when I saw that she had gotten certified in that method and she was specifically doing that method on her clients, I was like, oh, this is what I want. And I always loved her work. So fast forward to September. So I've been dealing with that hair breakage and masking it with clip-ins from April to September. And fast forward and see how excited I was to go and visit Sion. So let's talk about what exactly IBE is. So it's called IBE invisible bead extensions. It is a specific method, like I said, that is a permanent hair extension. How IBE works is instead, mo a lot of extension methods that are sewn in, so it is a sewn in weft. When they are applied most of the time, you have these rows of metal beads and then the hair is laid on top of it and sewn together. The difference between this and IBE, um, when the hair is flipped up, the bead, you do not see any metal beads. It just looks like very undetectable, super seamless. And um, I'll even show you just right here off, like looking at my own hair. So when I flip up this row, and this is a month grown out and so healthy, you can see there are no metal beads that you're gonna see. There's no tangle. And then there was a lot of contact points. So it doesn't, there's not a lot of tension on the scalp. And I have two rows. So you can see here, when you flip up the row, here's my natural hair. When I flip the hair up, you can see that, you know, there's no nothing poking out from the hair extension. Nothing, no tension, no rubbing, no nothing. And I wanted the most gentle, less tension on the scalp type of application that I could get. And I really feel like this is the way to go. I actually had a pre-consultation with her to pick out the actual hair color that we were going to use. And the hair brand that Sion uses is a brand new brand called Saxon Row. I don't even know if they have a social media presence or even a website yet. They're absolutely brand new new and they are a Houston based company that ethically sources their hair. So the, the women that grow their hair and donate it, they are paid a very fair wage for their hair. So it's ethically sourced. 
it's just a really great brand, all high quality, like, and the ends are super thick. Um, the colors are beautiful. And I have a lot of experience touching and feeling different hair before in my life and I was immediately impressed by this type of hair. So before I even went in for my installation, I met with Sion. We went over like what the expectations were um, and then I picked out the color and then she was going to color my hair along with it and it's gonna just be this whole transformation. So on install day, after I had already like decided, we decided how much hair she was gonna order and then um, I went back for the actual installation and color and cut and all that stuff. So the installation, uh, like I said, I'm going to insert some clips here. And that, um, the day of the installation, it took quite a while. So it depends on like what you're doing the day of installing the hair extensions. But I showed up and like at 8.30, like very early and I left around probably three or so. It was, it was a long day. things like the color and all that and you don't really do color every time you do the hair um, extension part so these come pre-colored this the fake hair the fake hair the extensions come pre-colored we just had to also color my hair along with it that is one thing you don't have to do but um we wanted the full transformation and then see on at Saron hair studio in houston again highly recommend them love her so much she's so incredibly talented we have she installed two rows of hand tied hair when you, when someone references a hand tied hair extension, it just means the type of how it was, the actual hair was sewn, um, like manufactured before it goes on your head. You can have a, it machine sewed, so like a machine can sew the hair all together on the top, or they can hand sew the wefts, which mine are hand sewed so they're thinner, they're more lightweight on top, but you still have that depth and that like weight on the bottom as well. So they're thinner, they're not gonna feel heavy on your scalp, you don't have any like these really like, bulky seams at the top. Let me tell you, it's so nice. So she installed, like I said, two rows. So I have one row right here that starts behind, like at my ear, like right above my ear, kind of goes in a U shape down in the back of my head. And then I have another row that starts right up here. The row starts right here. And it kind of goes, like I said, in a U shape behind the back of my head as well. And I originally went much longer than I thought I was going to. I thought I was gonna cut them a lot shorter and I probably will as time goes on, but uh, Sion ordered the longer ones. And so we're just gonna kind of cut them as time goes on because if you know anything about hair extensions, the hair will dry out after a while. So you wanna make sure that you are trimming it. So I definitely plan to go shorter as time goes on. After I left the salon that day, I was feeling like a goddess and it definitely gets some taking used to so let's talk about maintenance and let's talk about styling and washing and stuff and just like my final thoughts and then we'll wrap this up because I'm definitely gonna come back and update as I wear these hair extensions I feel like maintenance is so easy when I first got these installed it definitely took me a few maybe like a week and a half to really kind of get used to them because I I've never had this much hair in my life, so I wasn't used to it. It definitely took me a good week and a half to get used to it. You know, I was just like, oh my gosh, this is a lot of hair. I have to like put it up. It's just a lot. There is maybe a little bit of 
I didn't feel like it hurt. I felt like it was just something there and it definitely felt tight because they do feel tight when you first get them installed. Again, it didn't feel like it was pulling out my scalp. It didn't feel like it was raw or hurting or anything like that. It just felt different. As far as like styling your hair, you can 100% wear it up and like, it's so undetectable. Your wefts, like I feel, are so seamlessly blended in with my roots and things like that. The extensions themselves are rooted, so it's not this like stark contrast between my roots and the extensions. You can wear your hair up in a ponytail or a high bun. Uh, my natural hair, let me just share with you right now, is fairly short, so I can't get all of this hair up in a high ponytail. <laughs> So I have to definitely bobby pin the back of my hair as I'm throwing it up on my head or doing something like that. Or you can do low ponytails with ease. Anyway, these are really easy and super versatile depending on what your lifestyle looks like and working out and things like that. The only thing that I find that these might be a little problematic for is if you were spending tons of time in pools at the beach, things like that, where you could potentially get your hair wet all the time and get those chemicals in it. I don't like to get my hair wet in pools and on the beach anyway, so that may or may not be a deal breaker for you. As far as washing the hair, I go about every five days between washes. I just feel like my hair feels super heavy and weighed down with a lot of dry shampoo, so I try to avoid that as much as I can. Definitely five days. You can go to a week. Some people go like 10 days. Like it, It's crazy. It's very low maintenance as far as washing, but washing it is definitely a process. It's. I thought it was going to be like much harder than it actually was though. So what I like to do is I like to shower in the evening and wash my hair in the evening. And then after that, I will put it into a microfiber hair towel, which definitely helps get all the water out. Of it. I let it air dry for as long as I can. And then I dry it with a hair dryer before I go to bed. Um, you don't want to sleep on wet hair extensions. It can cause tangling and matting. So you want to make sure that your hair is dry before you sleep on it. What I'd like to do when I dry my hair is I dry it in sections. I'll do the bottom row first and then I'll do the top row and just dry it and honestly it does it takes me about 15 minutes to do all of that so it's not bad it's definitely again not as bad as I thought it would be but it, again it's more time consuming than what I was doing before I didn't really ever hair dry use a hair dryer on my hair I just let my hair air dry and it would dry so fast because it was so thin and then then with a hairstyle like when you curl it so I curled it today and this curl is going to last me until I wash it so it is very low maintenance when it comes to like day to day. Yes, you're going to spend longer washing it. You're going to spend a little bit longer drying it and maybe a little bit longer curling it. It definitely takes me longer to curl. But once I got all of that done, I'm good. I'm like good for until I wash my hair again. And that's what I'm really liking about it because I'm using less heat on my natural hair and I have a lot of versatility and the hairstyle lasts me a long time. I also sleep with my hair in a loose braid before I go to bed. I sleep on a silk pillowcase, which I feel like is my favorite thing and I had one for over a year anyway. So that way it just keeps it in a protective hairstyle as I sleep. Um, they recommend keeping your hair in some sort of a protective protective hairstyle so it does not tangle as you move throughout the night. Overall, I don't feel like there are a lot to maintain. I feel like it's been a lot easier than I thought and I really love them now. I'm just like, oh, why did I wait this long to try them? I know that a lot of, the big question that many people have is pricing. This is definitely going, I hate to be that person that's like, well, it's definitely going to, definitely, you know, I, I hate to be that person, but it really truly is um, going to vary based on how much hair you need. Are you gonna do one row? Or are you gonna do two rows? Who is your installation um, or who's your stylist? Are you doing color along with it? You know, all the things. You, there's a lot of things to consider. Now, the hair alone, like this brand, is going to set you back a pretty, pretty penny. The It's very high end. That is an investment, but this hair lasts well about a year as far as I was told which I will update you and I will let you know how well this hair lasts but from what I was told 
this last this hair lasts you well into a year um, and I'm taking really good care of it and I want to see how long it's gonna last me if it's gonna last me longer great and then you pay to have it installed and then you pay every however if your hair grows really really fast then you might be going back at about six weeks. My hair doesn't seem to be growing super fast, so it seems like I'm gonna get about two months um, before I have to go in for a move up. The, the investment, it's, not, it's a pretty penny. So it's definitely something that you are going to invest some money in. Like and many stylists require that you put down a deposit before you come back for, your installation. So really be mindful, interview your stylist, get the good vibes from them. If you're in the Houston area, I cannot recommend the Cerrone Hair Studio, specifically Sion. Um, she's great with blondes. She does a lot of like, um, no, she doesn't do just blondes, but I liked her work on blondes. And then she's amazing with invisible bead hair extensions. You want that method. So if you want to find a stylist and you're not in Houston, you can go to the Invisible Bead Extensions website and find a stylist that way and interview them. Go in a local Facebook group, ask around, see if you can find somebody that way as well. Will my opinion change as time goes on? Do Am I going to notice any more damage? Am I going to notice anything else about these hair extensions later on? We'll see. If I have an update, if you are watching this later and I have an update video, I will have that linked down below for you so you can watch that. And then, like I said, if you aren't sure about pulling the trigger on this yet and you still want to try some more removable hair extensions, I still stand by Hidden Crown. I will link my review videos on those um, hair extensions, their halo and their clip-ins. Uh, they've been so good to me for many years and I can't let this video end without mentioning that one more time in case you are not ready to pull the trigger on some invisible heed hair extensions. So with that, we are going to end this video. Like I said, I know it's a super long one, but if you stuck around for the whole thing, I don't know, you deserve like a couple of cookies, quite honestly. Okay, I hope this was helpful. If you have any additional questions, make sure to leave them in the comments below and I will get back to them as I, as I see them. Okay guys, so that's it. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's video. When I have an update, I will put it below for you. So stay tuned as I wear these extensions for the next, I wanna say year. Let's say we're gonna do this for a year. We're gonna do it. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. We will see you all in my next video. Bye.